Ain't you glad you got your Bible this morning? Ain't you glad you can own a Bible? My word. When you get there, say amen. Amen. If you found that place, if you will stand, and we're going to read God's word. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. To us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with firm and heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Brother Billy Lemons, would you pray God's anointing on the word today? Amen. Amen. I guess we could say as you're being seated this morning, I guess we could say that the report has come in. Here we are at the end of another year that God has been faithful. He's been faithful. He's kept his word. He hadn't gone back on his word. Uh, He told us he would bless us and he's blessed us. And uh, I just want to ask you a question this morning. Have you been blessed this year? It's just a blessing in the 12, going on 13 years that we've been here, if I can look around even in this crowd today, and I can see where God has brought people, uh, people not only from going through trials, and going through tests in life and things in life, God brought them out of it, put them on a rock, took them out of an old miry pit, and sometimes that was in their mind. The situation ain't changed, but God's changed. We say around here that... uh, Situations don't change God. God changes situations. Amen. He can take a lemon and make lemonade out of it. Amen. He can sweeten it up. And that thing that when everybody else is going through, that you go through because it's the peace of God that passes all understanding, that keeps our hearts anyway. So it's all to do with God. But God has been good. He's been good all this year. But in the 12 years I've been here, I, I, I look around here and see people that was bad, sickness, bad, and going through grieving times. And here today, you, you, you're not, you don't have that anymore. God has broken that yoke. He's, he's taken that from you, taken that away from you. So God has been good. But just in this year, I just want us to think about that God has been faithful. If we had time, we could go over and we could read the book of Malachi and it tells us what to do. It tells us that we'll do these things, how good a God will be to us. And, uh, and it ain't just only with financial blessings, it's with peace of mind. It's with joy where the Bible said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, I look around a lot of times. I see people carrying hurts and burdens and, and griefs. I just see them uh, carrying it. When, when the Bible tells us over in Peter also in these books here, First and Second Peter, it, it tells us what to do with all the cares. And uh, it's a peace of God that passes all understanding. It, it tells us what to do to have that. Peace of God that passes all understanding. But it, it says, cast all of your cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you. And I just want to say that this morning that you may be carrying something and, and sometimes it's a weight. Sometimes it's something you ain't got no business carrying. It really, it really, you ain't got no business letting it get you down and, uh, to take your eyes off the mark, to take you away from worshiping God, praising God, be a witness for God. And, and the Bible talks about laying aside that weight. But this morning, I just want to use this as maybe an encouraging time. I don't think I would be fair to God's word without giving the good and the bad and then the ugly. But if you own the good, it just stays good. If you own the bad, it just gets uglier. Amen? That's the way it goes. But I just want to use these two verses this morning and pray that God's anointing will just help us, lead us through these two verses, and we'll be going on to the house. I wrote down some good things that I thought surely that I would use, even looked up definitions of words, and I and I got eight or ten definitions of a couple words, and I just thought for sure that I would use those. But I, I'd rather let's let God speak to you this morning as we read this word, and and in verse nine as we start out with uh, the Lord, and we need to realize that uh, David said in Psalm one twenty four, 
You know, we've been preaching hard around Christmas time how they don't want to use the word Christ anymore. On Jesus' birthday, I was real offended through all that time. Wednesday night, we was here. We was accounted. We, we've got a charge that's come to us after Wednesday night of what we're going to do, you know, as a body of believers. And, uh, and we've made a choice that, that what, what we're going to do. Joshua said in Joshua 24, he said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. See, we, we're not in a place when we come to Christ. Well, before we come to Christ, Brother Carl, we was, we was in a place we thought was in neutral, but really we was in reverse. But when we come to Christ, we can't neither be in reverse and we can't neither be in neutral. We, we've got to be in drive. We've got to be pressing on the upward way. You hide some gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, please plant my feet on higher ground. And what's that meaning? Seem like if the Lord's good to you. Seem like, how many of y'all was God was good to you in 2012? In 2013, 2014, then 2015. So God just didn't decide just this year to be good. He's always been good. The Bible said every good and perfect gift come from above. So in Psalm 124, David said, if it hadn't been that word that you're looking at, it's a four-letter word, L-O-R-D, Lord. He said, if the Lord hadn't have been on my side, the one that stole the stars in the skies, the one that put the sun that will shine and the moon to shine, that makes a day, no one else can make it, the one that can send his only son, himself come in the flesh and died for men, it said the Lord. The Lord is not. That's not, that's bigger than any political realm. That's bigger than any government. That's bigger than anybody maybe with uh, financial means. That's the one that owns it all. That could just come with the, with his wind and just Alabama could show you just what could happen and how blessed we was that nobody, we was here Wednesday night, nobody in our church, nobody's house has gotten blown away here in Haywood County. Nobody's family has suffered loss from it. I'm going to tell you over and over, God is good. Yeah. Said the Lord, the Lord is not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Maybe we could look up that word slackness, and, and I did, and I had a whole lot of words with slackness. Oh, you know what slackness is. I, I don't have to tell you. You know when we get slack in doing things in life, we don't take care of it. It's just something that we don't take care of. It's something that, we'll, would, would, that we would, if we did, if, our, if we seen our children treating someone as I've preached so many times, that they were slack. To say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, or thank you for doing what you did. We would scold on our children for what we do when we do God after God has done gave us everything that we got. And we ain't even got time just to come back just like that one leper was. It was 10 of them that God blessed and one come back and he said, where's that other nine at? So we don't want to be like that. I don't want to spend time on that. But we don't want to be like that after God has done been so good to us. Children. We worry about children. We worry about youth. We worry about what's going to happen to them. I tell you what's going to happen to them. They're going to be in bad shape. If we as grown-ups don't run this race out. Don't put something in them before they cover us up with dirt. If they ain't got somebody they can look up to, said, I'm going to tell you what, and my uncle may not love, love God, but I'm going to tell you, I had a granddaddy right up to his dying day. I looked up to him because he didn't turn his back on God because God was good to him. You want to worry how, you want to worry about how to make them keep, stay off drugs? You worry about them anymore, whether they're going to be in church or not? Be a witness to them. Be something that they can remember. When I was a child, the baby said, the Bible said, I, I spoke like a child and, and I act like a child. But when I become a man, I put away those childish ways. How childish it would be of us not to be appreciative for what God has done, done for us in 2015. He started off in January. January 1 of last year, he woke up that morning. The very first day of that morning, it wasn't Walmart that woke up. It wasn't the stock market that woke up. It wasn't Union Planners Bank that woke up. It wasn't nobody, but God woke you up. And he woke you up every day of the year. 
Well, if you didn't praise him on that right there, and you didn't worship on that right there, you ain't no worshiper. Don't you know? Don't you know he wasn't slack concerning his promises? He said if he takes care of the birds and the lilies of the fields, how much more? Did he take care of you because we was good? Did he take care of us because we deserved it? Did he take care of us because we did our part and we stayed faithful? No, he took care of us because he's God and he's Lord and he ain't slack. You know the thing about it you ought to grab a hold of. You may sit right here and you may say, man, I'm just a heathen. And I'm going to tell you what, we all heathens apart from the grace of God. Apart from Calvary, that blood that shed, uh, we all heathen apart from God's mercy and apart from God's grace. But you ought to sit right here today and you ought to learn yourself a lesson. Sit in the midst of all that foolishness I've been doing. I'm talking about from a young man to an old man. How foolish. Matter of fact, you ought to be hard on yourself if you're over 40. That you ain't unlearned by now. That it wasn't nobody but God. Nobody can but God. Nobody will but God. Nobody's able but God. Because he's God all by himself. Man, some of y'all must be real bad. Now, <laughs> words, you can raise your hands around here. You can clap if you've got a little baby that you know that God doesn't bless you with. You can clap if he ain't never had an IV put in him. You can clap if you ain't never been to honor with him. The Bible said you get out of the way and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Jesus asked Peter, said, who you say I am? He said, you're the Christ. He said, I own that rock right there. I'll build my church. I'm going to tell you something. They can do away with a non-denominational church if they want to. They can do away with it. They can do away with the Baptist. They can do away with the Presbyterian. And they can do away with the Pentecostal. But I'm going to tell you one thing. That rock called Jesus, it'll be going. Look at heaven and earth shall pass away. He said, but my word remain forever. I ain't got to put it. Boy, God, good. The Bible said the Lord, he ain't slack. I'm telling you, he ain't slack concerning his promises. The Bible says, you may say, why my word? Man, I ain't been doing good. Ain't none of us good. The Bible said, ain't none good. Your heart's wicked. You can tell somebody over there you love them. You're a lady in this church. You can tell somebody today you love them. And be a little old something going tomorrow. You can get a little jealous streak in you. You can get a little envy in you. You can hear that. You can hear they talked about your butter beans wasn't good at the last fellowship meal. You'll hate them rest of your life. <laughs> Lay aside that weight that so easily beset you. Man, you can have your mind made up. Uh, you've been looking at that dress all year long. It done been hanging in that window all through the holidays. You done went by and checked on it every day. You just want to wait till you get through the Christmas season. You was going to buy it and you showed up at church this morning and somebody was wearing your dress. Oh, man, if I tell you the things that have got in people that once said they love one another. The Bible said, because iniquity abounds. What's that iniquity? That thing inside of us that God is trying to capture. That thing that God is trying to get a hold of. That's why he said, you got to love me with all your heart, mind, bottom, and soul. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You got to get in there where it ain't no room for roll, no rock and roll no more. Ain't no room for no country music no more. It ain't no room for no Playboy books no more. It ain't no room for your Facebook no more. It ain't no room for nothing but Jesus. If people lick their fingers and turn that Bible as much as they flip that Facebook, huh? Oh, boy, what if they done that? I don't even see how they got no thumb left. They just roll it. They scrolling down Main Street. See if they got anything on Main Street. Then they go down Poplar Street. Then they go down Cedar Street. Then they go down Jackson, Jackson Highway. My mind was going to another street. 
And the Bible said, won't you think on these things? These things that are holy and are true and of good report. The devil's got more gadgets and more gadgets. And there's a way that seemeth right in the man. But the end of lead it to death. You say, how you know, preacher? Because I done tried some of them. And I'm trying to warn you before you get there. I've often heard, no, I didn't. I said it. I said, if you ever hear a preacher preaching on something real hard, he gets down on it. He said, you get this right here in your life, you won't be able to get away from it. It'll have a hold on you. If he's really preached on the heart, how come you think he ain't preached on the heart? Because he knows about it. But I'm going to tell you something else I know about. I know no matter how far you get and how low you go and how bad you get, there's a Jesus that's going to love you and you can't be separated from it. Because the Lord ain't slack. Sir Shikani, concerning his promises. When he said, what shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, he knowed you had that flesh on you. He knows you had that heart in you that he's trying to transform and he wants you to just give him what, what he deserves. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. He said, which is your reasonable service, but it seems so unreasonable, don't it? It seems so unreasonable. But the Lord, I was talking about us, but the Lord is not slack according to his promise. Boy, when he said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. I'm talking about he gave you salvation. You didn't earn salvation. He done wrote your name down in glory. He done sealed it by the blood of the lamb. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can, woo, God is so good. I'm going to tell you something. Oh, precious. He ain't slack concerning. Oh, precious is a flow that makes Ed Bond white as snow. There's no other fount I know. Some, some folks, as long as they've been in preaching, if I want to tell you that Daryl right here, if Daryl looks at you and tells you he remember a time that God saved him, redeemed him, drawed him by the Holy Spirit, he put his faith in Calvary and what Jesus done for his sin, he put his faith in that, he asked God to save him, he repented, he confessed to God that he was lost, he turned to Calvary for every answer and God saved him. It would confuse you this morning if I told you that Daryl may not be a plug nickel in your mind and I may not be a plug nickel in your mind, but I come to tell you that if Daryl has come by the way of the cross, Daryl is absolutely complete and he's absolutely perfect and there ain't nothing the world can do about it. There's a whole lot of evangelists. There's a whole lot of preachers. If I would say if Johnny Wayne has done that, he's absolutely perfect. And when he stands before God, he'll be absolutely perfect. The Bible says you're not your own no more. You've been bought with a price. So we don't live up under the spirit of fear. We live up under the spirit whereby we can cry out a father. We, we've got a heavenly father. He don't, he don't unadopt children. He, he claims them for his own. He said, I ain't lost a one. I might, I still got them all. I come to tell you in 2015, it's been some stuff to go on on the news. You said, you think it's all going to hell, but I'm going to tell you what ain't going to hell. God's word ain't going to hell. God's promises ain't going to hell. He said, I'm not slack. I want you to get that in your mind. He ain't slack. Man, if he said, I done prepared you a place in glory, let not your heart be troubled. Boy, he ain't slack. He ain't done that slack going the rope. He still got it right where he's still anchored that thing. He done dialed it off. Look at, you can tug on it. It's tied, it's there. It ain't going to ever change. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word remains forever. Look at, he's not slack concerning his promise. Right after church today, you ought to run somewhere and beg somebody to open a bookstore somewhere. And you need to get your books about this thick and ain't about that wide. And it's listed in our ever promise that's out of God's word. You think you're wealthy now. When you get through reading his promises, 
And you get through understanding this verse, that God is not slack concerning his promises. It never is an issue from God. Well, this world's in bad shape. Well, it ain't an issue from God. School system in bad shape. It ain't an issue from God. The country's in bad shape. It ain't an issue with God because God's sane. He said, look, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look here, I'm a God, don't ever change. When I woke up this morning, that's why I was happy. I, I look at folks and I, I see something, done, something done got you. I mean, it, it'll come up on you. Brother Jason, told me, it'll come up on you. You got to watch it. I remember Miss Violet Hardest tried it. Harmony, she would recite that serenity prayer. Remember, Danny? Lord, give me some wisdom. Lord, those things that I can change. Lord, let me, you know. And them things that I can't change, them things that you got your hand on, those things that you got your control on, those things that you got in line for me to grow me and make me to the person I need to be. Lord, those things I can't change. Let me leave them alone. I'm here to tell you what we all need. If we want to be better folks, we need some more trials. Because we ain't going to trust God until we go through a trial. I'm going to tell you something, I can call names right here. I remember a time you loved Jesus, but you were laying in a hospital bed when you did. Huh? Hello? I can tell you a time that you loved Jesus. You was at an altar, but you done got a bad word, and the doctor done gave you a bad word. And I can tell you a time that you loved Jesus, but I can also tell you about a woman that got a bad word. Sister Connie over here, when she got the bad word, she was faithful. When she went through the test, she was faithful, and ever since she's been faithful. Well, we think sometime when we... Ain't going to do for God, we penalize the church. No. Gates of hell don't do nothing to the church. All you're doing is missing a blessing. Yeah. Look what the word says right here. We'll go home. It said, the Lord is not slack. He's not slack. I, I got it right here. I'm tempted to read it, but time won't allow me to. We need to get on something else. He's not slack concerning it. Hmm. His promise. The Lord is not slack. Why? Because it's a promise. The Bible said, let every man be a liar, but let God be the truth. He's a God that can't lie. And look how this word cuts on us all right here. It said, as some men count slackness. Huh? Those things that we said, man, I got it. Man, I got it. Boy, I got it. I understand. Boy, I finally understand how God can save me. I'm going to tell you something. If you understand it, you'll be faithful. If you understand it, you'll be faithful. If you understand what Jesus did for you and how you were saved, you'll be faithful. You'll be a worshiper. You'll be a praiser. You'll be a part of God's work. It don't make no difference if hell comes against you. It don't make no difference if the person behind you sneezes and germs all over you. You'll move. You'll get somewhere to come. But look here. I used to love a song that said, I shall not be. I shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Why? Because I'm grounded in Jesus. That's the reason why. I ain't grounded in myself. I ain't grounded in Walmart stock. I ain't grounded in Union Platter or no other bank. I'm grounded in Jesus. Somebody give God a hand clap. I got to quit and talk when you get home. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. I done preached good already this morning. I done, I done preached real good. I don't care what you say. I feel good about it too. You hear me, Dan? He ain't never let me down, man. There ain't never been a morning that ever got up. I, I, that I got up. Let me just say. That I knew it wasn't there. If I was to tell you all the prayers just for other people that I prayed for, that he done answered. It said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. It's some men count slackness. Mm. Some men don't have no problem getting slack. We're going to go on and stay sweet. Dot comma. <laughs> In mine and Bobby's Bible. 
and Sister Judy's Bible. It said not willing, but but is but is look at that word. But is long suffering. I'm gonna tell you what God got on his on his mind. Sometimes I think we think we're gonna beat him. He got time on his. He got eternity behind him. He got eternity in front of him, don't he? He got more time than you got. I think I'll just wait a while. I think I'll just let somebody do it a while. God said, that's okay. I got, I'm, I'm, I got time. I got time. I, I got time to give you all that rope you want. If that's what you want to do. Look at, if you want to go on out there, that's okay. I got the end of it. But look at, I'm long suffering with you. Ain't you glad that God is long suffering? Give you the time. It says, but as long suffering to usward, not willing. You know what perishing would be? To think that I live through life, being in hell is one thing. But I remember that rich man that got to hell. He must have known something, Peggy. He wanted, to, he wanted somebody to go back and tell his brothers. Not to come to this place. He wanted to go back and tell his brothers, look, there's some knowledge that I never attained. And I, as I talked to a young man one time, had a 4.0 at UT Knoxville, and I shared Christ with him. I was in some carpenter overalls. He said, my hardest deal with getting saved was, here I am, got a 4.0 at UT Knoxville. Here's a man with carbon overalls telling me something I don't know, and I know you're telling me right. Just as bad as being in hell, you're going to be enlightened of all God was. You're going to be enlightened of every morning how, how God took care of you. As David said, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, the waters would overtake me. God's going to show you every trial and every test and every kind of way that God sent the right doctor. He sent the right nurse. He sent that right person to use that right infant. And it was God who kept you. Man, some of you folks ain't shouted in so long. You ain't thought about the goodness of God in so long. You done got so prideful. Remember how thankful you was when you, when you first got that first new car? You done had so many new ones now, it don't matter. Remember how it was when you could go in the store? And you couldn't go in, but you got to go in the first time. You ladies went into the ladies' department, the men went in the men's department, and you picked you out your first suit. And it wasn't a hand me down, it was something that God done bless you with money in your pocket, and you was going to be able to buy your own. Come on. Come on. I wonder if you realize. That when you got up this morning, not because of we done anything worthy yesterday, but because of God's plan. Amen. Don't shout now. You don't understand what I'm talking about. But we woke up this morning and God's mercies was new every morning. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Let me say this to you. If you're sitting right there thinking you didn't need them, you're the lostest man or woman in this crowd. If you done got proud when you said, no, I did it. I'm going to tell you something. You didn't wake yourself up and it's people a whole lot younger than you can't even walk or get around. It's the Lord that's good to you. It's the Lord that's worthy of praise. It's the Lord that's worthy of honor, of worship. Hallelujah. Ain't it something that the little children know about worship and praise? You notice they run on them fast songs. You watch them. It's like putting on a brakes. If we come off, a, I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship, even the little kids, and we go into his Lord, they'll just stop dead in the trap. A lot of folks don't understand that. It must be something to that praise. It must be something to it. He said, look. If you don't praise me, he said, I'll use rocks for him. 
I'm going to tell you something about God. God ain't going to be lacking in nothing. God ain't going to be suffering in nothing. God ain't going to lay his head down. God ain't going to come at the end of the day and say, Oh, I didn't get no praise today because God is going to get praise because he's all God all by himself. He's not concerning. What you done got slack in in 2015? You done? Huh? You done? God done bless you with a child. You ain't worried about a child no more. You already got one, so you're done. You're just going to go and live your life, think everything's going to be fine. I'm going to tell you about God. God said, the Lord giveth. Hey, if you don't understand that part, you may understand it when it says the Lord taketh away. Oh, David, look, he had it down, Hammer. He done prayed that the Lord would spare his son. His son done got sick, and I'm trying to close. I'm trying to close. I just thought today, right after celebrating Christmas, because I know, I know y'all been throwing y'all's hands up and shouting all over the house about this Jesus' birthday. I thought today, boy, we'd have a great day. Yeah. But we done got tired. We done eat so much chicken dressing, ham. Huh, done stuffed it down, one more dessert. Somebody told me the other day they was eating so much to put it in the mouth, couldn't even swallow it. That's just the goodness of God. God just doesn't bless you. He done done every one of us like, like, a, like a kids or grandkids. He ain't just supplied or, or needs. He done supplied you want. We ain't just got one car in the driveway. We ain't just got one toilet in our house. We ain't just got one faucet in our house. We ain't just got one bedroom in a house. He can do abundantly above what we can even ask. I think. He's wanting to pour his blessings out on you. Why? Because he ain't slack in his promises. He said, bring it unto me. You bring your first fruit right here and let me show you won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't even. Let's get done. We got one more verse. Boy, he's not willing that any man should perish. I see people every day. The joy is gone. They ain't happy. Joy is gone. Joy is gone. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. I think about Johnny that met you talking about them that slip in. They don't slip in to add to. They slip in to take away. Let me get done, y'all. A few of y'all is going to grab hold of this. It's not, it's, he's not willing that any should perish. But all come to repentance. You know what? I, I think we as believers. I don't know. I was asked a question a while ago. I said, Brother Eddie Ritten, how many has come to worship today? How many has come to praise today? I said, I don't know. I said, that famous man, Billy Graham's old in years. He said, but ain't but 20%. 20% of the body of believers in a church is supposed to be the body that's membership lives it that way. By his revivals of all the time, that 80% of the hundred that got saved have checked the card that they was a member of the church somewhere. That means they done walked down an aisle. That means they done joined. That means they done went through the water. But I'm going to tell you something. That carpet right there won't make you born again. Shaking that preacher's hand, having to pray, won't make you born again. Going through that water back there won't make you born again. Even though it's the thing God said you do. Repent and be baptized. It won't make you born again. But I'm going to tell you what will make you born again. When you realize, if you've ever got saved, when you realize that you're helpless, there's going to be people walk out that door today, Danny. But they're going to think, look here, I got it going on. My children are healthy. I got a good home. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to just try to close. Not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. God don't play. Amen. Now, some of you folks maybe won't try to get around the IRS, but if they ever get on you just right, 
Some people want to fool with the government. I know a man thought he was going to outdo them too. It didn't work out for him. But you can't get around God. You know why? Because he loves you. He's going to be reaching for you. Now, there's a lot of folks going to walk out that door today. Because you don't see a need for him. Are you hearing me? I'm closing. You can go stand at the piano if you want to. Just go stand there. They're going to walk out that door today. They ain't going to be born again. They ain't going to be a worshiper. They ain't going to be a praiser. They ain't going to be faithful. They're always going to have their panties in the wad about something. You heard me now, ain't you? I got your attention, doesn't I? They're always just a little galled about something. You know why? Because they don't see themselves as low down, as wretched. They don't see themselves as hopeless. They don't see themselves as one that if they walk out that door without Christ, everything that they got in life, God could take it. I walked into a home one night because the Lord, twice in my life I walked into homes. One time I told a man sitting on the front row, if he didn't quit playing with God, that God showed me he was a skeleton. And God was going to turn him into what he is. And God did. He's a miserable man today. I don't even know if he'll ever be able. I ran into somebody on Christmas night. They got every reason in the world for not coming to church. But you can find them out eating at midnight on Christmas night. Something greasy. Listen to me. I walked into a home. And I told the man, the Lord sent me there. I beat on the door. Nobody come to the door. I left and was going to Jackson. I got out past the gin on Jackson Highway. And the Lord says, if the house is on fire, would you have just picked to the door? Would you have broken a window out? Go back to the house. I went back to the house and I sat in front of the man. He had plenty of money. He had a successful business. Money was coming, just, just money, money, money. He tried to get me to take his business. Won't you just take it? I said, I ain't got time for it. I want it. I said, if you don't give your heart and life to Jesus, he won't always strive with you. I had a seat pulled right up to his seat. Listen to me. The Spirit of the Lord left out of that room in his living room. I said, you don't have to worry about it now. And that guy looked at me and he said these words. He said, he's gone, ain't he? I said, he's gone. You know he's gone, and I know he's gone. That convicting power that I go and strive with a soul, let him know that he's lost, was gone. I went in a house one night. I said, the Lord sent me here, and if you don't do what God wants you to do, he's going to take you home, and he's going to take your family, and he's going to take that automobile sitting up there in front of your house. You know what happened? The Lord took us home took his family, and took his automobile. Listen to me. It's God's will that none should perish. I'm going to tell you something. You may not want God to rain on you. You may not want the Spirit of the Lord to transform you. And I'm going to tell you something. You can get up under that umbrella where it won't hit you. But I'm going to tell you something. You won't never change the fact that God loves you. And if you turn your back on God and you choose to go against God or go against God's work, you go right ahead, but you make sure that you understand you ain't no match for God. Amen. If God's blessed you, you go down to Bonner or St. Jude sometime, walk around. Come on now. It's mamas that's been down there probably six months, eight months, a year. Would give anything to get up this morning. And carry their baby to church. Amen. They gave anything if they could have carried the baby to a nursery. All the way from a baby to a grandmama or granddaddy. There's grandmamas and granddaddies would give anything if their grandchildren or children was in church. I remember what you said, Brother Donnie. You said I'd give anything if my grandchildren was here. Well, we've got to see them for that. God will give you desire. God, what's your desire? When you leave here today, when you get down the road and it don't work out right because you turned your back on God, let me tell you something. You remember today, the decision you made today. 
Six months from now, it's getting rough. It'll still be because God loves you. Let me tell you about a man right over here, and I'm close. His wife was losing blood. Johnny Wayne's wife was losing blood. Who was that with, Allie Grace or Libby? Well, Allie Grace. Everybody was thinking it's over. She's lost the baby. That man down there at the women's clinic on a Sunday afternoon down in Memphis looked at me and said, let me tell you something. We take the pressure off of you. If God don't let me have this baby now, he said, I'm still going to have a baby. Life ain't but a puff of smoke, Carl. He said, I'm still going to have my baby. And he said, let me tell you something else. It ain't going to change one bit how big God is and how good God is. Amen. Now, I'm closing. This is old-fashioned stuff, and I'm closing to you. So if that man can say that and stay faithful, you went through having children. You didn't have no complications at all. God just didn't bless you. If you walk out that door and turn your back on God today, you don't give your heart and life to Jesus. You say, you're trying to scare us. No, I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't right, I am. I'm trying to tell you some news here. You ain't no match for God. You ain't no match for God. In Billy Graham's messages, at the end, they'd sing a song, Just As I Am, without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me. He said, now I bid us thou come to me. I done bid on you. I done bid higher than anybody. I bid high. I bid a son. Not only I bid a son, I bid agony. I bid stripes on his back. They whooped him. They beat him. They made him carry a cross. I done bid high. Who else bid that high? Nobody in the whole world's ever bid that high. Nobody's ever bid that high for you lost person. Let me tell you something. For you that's supposed to be saved, nobody's bid that high for you. Nobody's loved you like God loved you. We're going over to another year. Make up your mind. Choose you this day. That's Whom right. you going to serve? Thank you, Jesus. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. We'll serve the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Lord.